Now, not making eye contact. There's another thing I'd like to associate with that. Uh, when you're talking with someone and you'd like to pick up something from a memory, okay? You would usually. How many people watch Mentalist? Okay. There's particular. There's this particular scene that happens by Sid Bank Bank, where um, somebody wants to judge whether the person genuinely felt good about his family or not, right? So he asks, "Do you have a good childhood memory?" So the person goes back, looks up left, and says. Yes, I think I had a great relationship with my father. So the detective understands that the person is speaking the truth. Why? Because the person looked at you, went back into his memory, and came back and said yes. This is where you, on the left side of your brain, is where you store information. This is where you retrieve memory. That's called a presentation glitch, by the way. Okay. Um, there's something about eye contact that I really like. I'm wondering why didn't that part come in? Do you see this? Okay, who's the second character? From the house, thank you. Right? What? Good. Okay. That's it. Now we're talking about making eye contact. When you're genuinely with someone and you're very comfortable with them, what happens is the person who's making you comfortable because your eye contact with the person is literally between the eye and the chin. This is called the social gaze. Because when you're talking to somebody and you're very comfortable with them, this is where they're really looking at, focusing on the part of your face. You know what interviewers do to make you uncomfortable? They do this. You feel threatened. You feel you're under the sun's like focus light. You don't feel very comfortable. They have this ability to make you feel uncomfortable because they're looking at you instead of looking at your eyes, focusing more on your forehead. Which is why the social comfort is lost. And that's a, that's a strategy they use. Why am I informing you about this? Because when you're informed, you feel more armed. You feel more prepared. So relax. Let him do what he's doing. You continue with your performance. It is special. Now, there is something training people so it's easier to really go correct everybody's posture, slouching, making sure they're doing things right. But here, I don't have a lot of corrections to do. I'm just trying to show you the right uh, way to hold yourself when in public. So, these gentlemen and these ladies look really nice. Everybody's very well dressed and they're holding themselves well. Uh, what do you people think? Panta rocks, okay, we got that. Okay, so yes, thank you so much. Who said that? Who said that? You deserve a goodie. <laughs> no, 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 he's a goodie guy. Please pass one, one, two. You can pick up a coffee if you have any questions. Okay, so yes, uh, but gentlemen, you need to keep your blazers closed when you are standing. When I will be covering your business attire, I will be addressing this to you. It should, when you are standing, you don't need to keep both your buttons closed. Only one is sufficient. When you know you are going to be seated, getting up seated, getting up very often during a meeting, only one button closed is enough. And you should really flick it open like James Bond. It should be a swap flick of your, of your blazer. Right? So you don't necessarily have to keep both of them closed. There's going to be a lot of effort. Right? So just the top one is enough. It aligns your entire bit. Women, excuse. Okay? You do not have to necessarily keep it closed. You can keep it open. Whether you are standing, whether you are sitting, business rules for women in terms of attire are very different. So you don't have to follow the same model. Okay. Now, gentlemen, you are standing appropriately well. Uh, Bata, you could push your uh, chest back a little. Yes. <laughs> Parallel, parallel 
you on the ground. Just three to four inches apart. Maximum. Yes, that's how you get comfortable. We do not, we do not even walk like that here. And we do not even stand like that here. We need to keep them parallel on the ground. Ladies, you get to hold yourself in a V and then a Y. You know what I'm talking about? A V and a Y, yes. Most women know what I'm talking about. You hold yourself in a V and you bring one foot back in a Y. This is how a lady would stand with her legs together. Women do not stand with their feet parallel on the ground. They keep their feet together, one behind the other. Now you're obviously wondering, okay, now you need to pull yourself up. Okay, ladies, keep your hands beside you, just like a gentleman. You do not hold yourself, no barriers. Nothing, no barriers in front of you, no barriers behind you. You keep your hands out in the open. Now you're obviously wondering how long am I going to keep you standing? Right? So, when you get tired, sometimes you will be in situations you have to stand throughout, especially if you offer your seat to a lady and it's a one hour long presentation. So you really want to stand for a long time. So how do you keep yourself engaged? So then gentlemen are allowed to take one foot back and rest their weight on it. And sometimes rest their weight in front or rest their weight in back. But this needs to be a very suave movement. Even ladies can do this. Very suave. You know, it should be like very smooth, like how James Bond. Not like you're suffering from the lack of a bathroom. <laughs> okay? It needs to be very suave. You need to look at the gentleman. So, polished is how you should be. And comfortable. I tell you, you start with That's how. So, do they look polished? Actually, they're not really polished. I just told you they are being today. Thank you so much. Something across the table. When you need something that is lying on the other side of the table or out of your reach from here, not reach from here, <laughs> it is out of your reach from here, you request this to be passed to you. You say, please, will you pass me the wine? You say, please, will you pass me the ketchup? You do not say, why? There's a way of asking for it. Okay, this. <laughs> Gentlemen, even if you offer order a beer for yourself, please have it poured into a glass, then having it directly from the bottle. Even a canned drink, you need to have a glass, I mean, put it into a tumbler and then have uh, This is, I know, a little too much. <laughs> but no digging anything inside your mouth. How would you use a toothpick? <coughs> you use a toothpick, you cover it with the other hand and then use the toothpick. You do not show the inside of your mouth for free. <laughs> what is this lady doing with a cell phone? You never attend a cell phone call on a fine dining table. We have this rule in our house. No gadgets on the dining table. No gadgets at all. You can never allow a gadget to be rude on your behalf. When you are with someone, you choose to be seated with that person. You have chosen to spend time with that person. Please do justice to it. It is extremely inappropriate for you to pay attention to someone else sitting miles away when you really should be talking business with this person. It is not just business, even your personal contact. Avoid talking on the phone. What if your boss calls up? You are never allowed to excuse yourself from the final, from the table. Never. You don't even pick up the call. Right? Your boss doesn't understand? He hasn't taken my class. <laughs> Under no circumstance should you be picking up the phone call from a boss or from anybody. When you are in a situation you are expecting a call, then you inform your guest beforehand. So I would like to disturb our time together, but I am expecting a call. So please excuse me when that comes in. And that's okay, you are preparing the person. But this is the rarest of a rare case. When you choose to find time, you choose only time to communicate. No Wi-Fi, no brains, no phones, nothing. Just you and the person. This is where the soup spoon comes in. Now this does not have a pair. A coconut knife has a pair, a spoon for both has a pair, a butter knife does not have a pair, and a soup spoon does not have a pair. Okay? So now how do you have your soup? First of all, we eat our soup. We don't drink our soup. It's incorrect English to say, come on, come on, drink your soup. So it's easy to drink your soup. Now, your soup is to be had in a pot of water. So, it is in burnt. So, basically, you pour your soup directly into your mouth. That's the only side thing. So, it does not mean you start looking to raita, dal, every curry like this. So, every curry does not go like this. Raita, dal, and all go in your normal direction. It's only soup that you eat inside that. Now, there's this little bit of soup that's left. How do we finish it? You just 
pure or rather more slightly. The word is slightly. And we do not start. We do not do that.